Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at quite a mystery because on eBay um, this was listed as a HP laptop but there was no model numbers or anything like that. So this should be interesting. Um, now as you probably already would have already seen I've taken the address label off but I haven't unpackaged anything else. So I'll just speed up the video and let's see what's inside. Now for the moment of truth. Oh, we have an interesting um, power lead here. That'll be interesting to see how that plugs in. Uh, because that is the actual other end of the charger and that plugs into there. I thought this was like almost looks like something that you plug into a tower PC but oh gosh had me worrying then for a minute they put the wrong charger in right. so let's see what we have here very well packaged dog isn't it This looks nice. Alright, so let's actually have a look around the unit now and see if we can find any markings. So, ooh, around this side, it looks like we've got two USB ports, most probably 2.0, VGA, I think, and Ethernet, modem, weird thing, and I think it's a PCI Express slot there. Or two of them anyway. Around the other side, we have got headphone output, mic input, and an optical drive, and that's about it. So, let's just open this up and have a look at the condition of the keyboard, and the screen in fact. So the keyboard appears to be in very good condition. Um, same can be said for the monitor as well. Up here we have the model number, it is a Compaq NX6110. I'll have to download the drivers for it. Um, and I say that because I'm most probably going to reinstall Windows on this laptop. So I'll quickly plug it in and then we can have the moment of truth, uh, see whether it works or not. Before we do that, I just thought I'd point this out as well. We have a non-original charger here, so I probably won't need this plugged in too long. So one thing that I didn't um, mention before was the fact that around the other side is the charge input um, slot, so missed that out, but anyway, let's power this on now. Quite a noisy fan, but that's a good sign though, at least we know that works. I sometimes get worried with these units uh, when I can't hear the fan and sometimes I get the fan confused with the hard drive if it's a really noisy one anyway. So, at least we know the one on this one works anyway. Let's reposition it slightly. Right. Um, so, first things first, let's have a look at the system specifications. Uh, XP Service Pack 3, XP Professional, that's rare. Um, Intel Pentium M, 0.6 GHz, and 504 megs of RAM. I presume that would have been 512 megs of RAM. Um, but over the years, there's been a few dead RAM sales, most probably. So that's that anyway. Um, let's have a look at the programs. So we've got a few of the drivers here as well, which is quite good. And oh dear, something weird. Driver Genius Professional Edition. Now there could be an innocent app or that could be something sinister. Um, but I'm sure we'll soon find out anyway. Because it could install malware bytes. But you know what, I'm probably not going to bother because I'm going to reinstall Windows on this machine anyway. 
Um, now I'm going to have a look down the bottom in a minute actually to see if this was meant to be run on XP Home or XP Professional Edition, although either way I'm most probably going to install Home Edition on it because to be honest there isn't particularly much in the way of differences and it won't really matter anyway. So, um, it's quite a nice machine actually. Um, I'm going to go and download, download the drivers, have a look at the bottom, make sure, well, see if it is actually meant to be running on XP Professional or not, and either way, I'll put XP Home Edition on here. One thing I will quickly need to see though is whether the actual optical drive still works. Because usually on these old machines, it's still the computer can still see them, but um, the actual optical drive itself fails. So let's hope. Good. That is what we wanted. Now. Um, it probably won't let us install Windows XP anyway, and I don't actually want to do that. Um, so I'll just restart the system. And reposition the camera. Yeah, that's slightly better. Now, what is it? F10, I think. Oh no, this is a weird BIOS. Let's go to boot options. Uh, now, just a look at the boot order. We have optical drive device is first. So, that's alright anyway. We'll just exit out of this. So, it should just be straight. Um, straight to the CD. Okay, and back to normal speed again. Well, the camera is now running out of charge, so, um, I am going to have to charge it back up again and whatever part it comes to next I'll just leave it there until uh, my camera is charged again. Okay so um, the camera's battery is mostly charged back up again so let's just continue with the installation um, and let's go to United Kingdom. So I'll just enter the Windows uh, product key. I'm having to talk quite quietly um, because there are people studying. So the product key is now entered. So let's just go next. And GMT. And I'll just speed up speed up the video now. Ah, here is the bit that I like. The bit where um, it plays that nice tune if it's got the correct drivers for it. So let's go ahead and Ah, there we are, it's edited the resolution already. Press OK, and it'll come up with that nice little animation in a minute. That's what I've always liked about the Windows XP setup, it's just always been slightly more exciting than um, some of the other ones. Oh no, can't hear anything this time, it hasn't got the correct built-in drivers. So I just go next and oh, 
type in a name. No, it won't um, let me type beyond that, so I'll just leave it a retro technology. And next, finish. Right, so it's logging in. Um, now, as I said earlier, I was going to download the drivers from this. Thankfully, uh, HP has been very generous, and I have got a USB drive with the official drivers on it, rather than that dodgy program that was on here originally. Um, well, I think it was dodgy anyway. So, I'll find somewhere to plug this in. There's some USB ports around this side. There we are, it's detected that. Just go my computer. There we are. And oh, oh hang on. That wasn't meant to happen. Right, what should we go with first? Let's go with the touchpad drivers. And this is all pretty standard, so I might as well speed up the video. If it all goes to plan, then I'll continue just with it sped up. Or if it all goes very wrong, then um, I'll slow it down again. Right, so I'm going to restart this now. Um, I believe it has detected wireless network, so that's good anyway. Um, so let's reboot it and hopefully we'll see that it looks better uh, graphically. And well, there you can hear the sound drivers are working nicely. Um, and hopefully it will be quite happy with that. <laughs> Still got the XP install disk in there, so asking me if I wanted to boot from it. One thing that was different though was um the fact that on the previous version, it just on the XP boot screen, it just said Windows XP. And um, now it says Windows XP Home Edition. I'm surprised all the other versions don't put that in. I think in some versions of XP Professional, it uh, has that as well. Ooh, there's a command prompt window there. As you can see, the graphics are a million times better uh, with the correct drivers. Um, yeah, and it looks better. I'm going to go ahead and activate Windows, um, which will require connecting to my wireless network. So I'll do that now anyway, and um, then basically I'll stick it in preservation status. So I'll quickly do that. So I've had some trouble installing, um, installing, connecting to my Wi Fi network. So I'm going to install XP Service Pack 3 in hope that um, that will solve the issue because I mean for some, for some reason it's got a really weird UI with the um, obviously Wi-Fi network selector it doesn't look like what it does on my other XP laptops and I have a feeling that's because this is Service Pack 1 uh, rather than Service Pack 3 so I'm going to install Service Pack 3 now um, and hopefully it will be alright. So uh, I won't bother speeding up the video at this point. 
because there's not much point and it'd be a bit boring, so I'll just pause it for now. Oh, scratch that. This is just so nostalgic. I mean, look at this. Downloading, then it's got to check the computer for malicious software. Then it'll install Internet Explorer 8. Oh, crikey. Well, this is probably going to take quite a while, so um, I'm going to pause the video once again. Well, my suspicions were somehow correct. Um, I installed Internet Explorer 8 and restarted the computer. I also checked, uh, obviously, to see if a web page would load, and it did. So um, that's rather good. So it's successfully activated this copy of Windows. Um, that basically means this computer can go into a sort of state of preservation now. Um, and. Well, that basically rounds it up for this video. I may install a few other bits of software on here, like Mozilla Firefox, for example, um, or Malwarebytes. But um, that's basically it for this video, really. So I do hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you did enjoy it, then by all means, feel free to support my channel. Um, not by giving it any money or anything, by simply subscribing to it, that gives me motivation to buy these archaic machines from eBay <laughs> or Card Beat Sale and actually um, have a look at them here on YouTube. So, well, as I say, that's it. So, until the next video, thank you very much for watching and goodbye.